Yeah, that's with from the um, comprehensive plan. And, and when we reviewed, um, uh, Madam Chairman, Supervisor Miller, when we reviewed this, you, you've got um, um, two sides of the development. You have uh, roadways, um, and, and really it's the effect on the appearance of the roadway. On two sides, you have residential development. Um, we worked very um, diligently to try to, um, uh, and I think that there was more work done subsequently even uh, in, in with, uh, with uh, some of the neighbors um, to make sure that there were adequate um, uh, buffers, both in terms of uh, wall space and vegetation um, between this project and the other project. Um, you know, any time that you, and, and, and actually that we concentrated more the, the units towards uh, Savino Canyon Road, Cloud Road, as opposed to on the eastern and northern um, line, um, and, and increase the setbacks there and the variability. Um, the reality is, is when, whenever you do an infill project, the densities are going to be higher than what the existing density is, and one needs to um, uh, do one's best to fit that in and try to get the, uh, a similar character and, and buffer. Thank you. Are there any further questions of staff? If not, um, I would ask the applicant to make their um, presentation. Name for the record. Five feet within 
the property line and we're using that to do a buffer of enhanced landscaping. We're going to have at least one 24 inch boxed tree across from each of their homes to do some other enhanced landscaping. And we believe that this will end up looking like this, looking from their homes into our, into our um, community. So that was another condition that we agreed on with them. That's going to be a six foot um, split face block wall that's going to stagger. There will, um, uh, and as I said, there'll be enhanced landscaping. What we also dealt with was their number one concern. And these residents being the closest to the property, we're very concerned that there was going to be two story buildings that were going to look into their homes. So we agreed, and that's one of the core zoning conditions that we would build only one story buildings on the premise, on the property, nothing higher than 16 feet. We've had a lot of urging by a number of people involved to go to two stories and try to have more, more buildings going up rather than spread out. We have agreed not to do that. We feel that would be very detrimental to the adjoining residents. So we've stayed with that plan. These homes, by the way, along the east boundary I'm hoping you can both hear me while I'm over here. They're set in an arch, so if you look at it, these five homes are the closest to our property line, and then as the homes go further north, they actually start to move out to the east. So with our layout, there's going to be that 100-foot wall-to-wall separation for all these homes along the east boundary. As a result of working with the uh, five neighbors, we have letters of support from all five of these uh, homes that are the closest to the property and we feel that's very significant because it's easy to live a mile away and say how this is going to impact you and it may but these people are going to these five homeowners will have the uh, most they're most affected by it several of them are here today that can speak to uh, uh, the agreement we've reached with them the reduction from 169 which was uh, the plan submitted to 130 actually just came about in the last seven days. And that came about as a result of a compromise reached last Tuesday with two representatives of the Sabino Joint Neighborhood Committee, David Hefferly and Katrina McNerney, together with area residents Chris Monson and Bob Villamata, who is here today. And at that meeting, um, and this actually started Easter weekend, and Supervisor Carroll, again, because I think of his knowledge of the residents in the area, um, was dealing with both residents and was talking to me extensively, um, trying to broker a deal, quite honestly, to broker a compromise. And, um, and sometimes it was not so gentle urging on his part to, uh, to change positions, but it ultimately succeeded in arriving at a compromise that I think is a classic compromise. Both parties think they aren't getting enough or gave too much. Um, and that's the case here. Um, but as a result, and we, and we met with those two people, and we have met with them before one time with Supervisor Miller. They represented a group that was organized and according to their, um, I don't know if it's on their website, but some of their correspondence, they represented nine HOAs in the area and 3,000 families. So we felt that that was the effective group to work with. And as a result, we've come up with Can this be seen? Yes. Okay. And what we have is on the left, we have my left, we have what this looked like at 169 houses. On the right, it's what we think the PDP will look like that will be resubmitted, and we'll probably have it ready here in the next week. <coughs> it's, it'll be resubmitted any day at the 130. So what we have done is, if you look along the perimeters, Mr. Kajino, excuse me, could you slide that up a little bit so that we can close it a little closer now? This way. Yeah, yeah. There we go. See, we can make it a little bit bigger. There you go. There you go. Does that work? Yeah. Thank you, sir. So along the, uh, this is Cloud Road. So along Cloud Road, we started by removing houses. You have to excuse me, my allergies have kicked in, so. I'm a little dry. We removed houses actually along all the perimeters. 
So if you look along the roads, what we've done is we've gotten away from this linear run of homes in a fashion where you would see rows of homes. And we've now broken those up. We've reduced homes, which have allowed us to stagger the placement. If you look at this corner of Sabino Canyon and Cloud, you'll see quite a big difference. And I'm also, well, I'm going to talk about homes first, and then I'll talk about walls. You'll see quite a bit of difference, and you'll see the number of homes reduced where they were three deep in some patterns, where they're only one deep now. So as you're driving Cloud, Sabino Canyon, or Knollwood, there is going to be much less massing um, that you're going to see, and, and it's going to be, we think it's going to provide a real visual interest. We also then, um, in listening to the neighbors that we met with, we staggered the walls. Most of these walls are five foot masonry blocks, split face, very attractive, similar to the walls that are used in Ventana Canyon. Um, most of you have been out to the area sites and you see those walls as the standard walls that we use. They're capped. And what we did was we added a tremendous amount of staggering at the request of the neighbors. And we actually sat down with them at the meeting a week ago and took a pencil out and drew on the plan where they wanted to see the walls staggered. So you'll see that the walls vary as you're going along the cloud. It's completely different where this was simply an arch at the corner, how it staggers. It now cuts in so there's a very large area before you see a home. It staggers up Sabino Canyon at the gate. We actually then move the gates as opposed to an entry gate right here. We put two entry gates which would allow you to fully drive into the property um, and continue the staggering all the way along the perimeters to add visual interest that was asked for. We're also preserving these dots are existing trees. And Subino Canyon has some great um, uh, existing vegetation. Those trees range from 12 to 20 feet in height. And the canopies are, in some cases, up to 20 feet. So what we're going to do is utilize those existing trees, plant in between them to hopefully then have a canopy that will be completely filled in once we have some years of growth under our belt. Um, the, the terms of the agreement that we reached, so that they're very clear for the record, is that there will be 130 one-story, three-bedroom homes, each containing 1,244 square feet. Um, we jointly, this being the people we met with and uh, our group, we support that Cloud Road be an exit only. And this is uh, condition 7B, where staff has asked that this be full access. We think that it, the, um, and our traffic engineer is here and can speak to it, that this will function as an exit only. This will avoid any stacking of people that would be coming eastbound on cloud, trying to turn into the intersection, and would have to wait and stack up traffic. So we're in agreement on that. We've agreed that the colors will be an earth tone palette of the homes um, as provided in zoning condition 13. These are actually the color palettes and these are the renderings of the three bedroom homes that we're proposing to build. Uh, these are what our architect is called contemporary desert modern. We have also had the architect working on adding rear porches and this was another request that Supervisor Carroll had, had made. And the rear porches would look something like this. And those porches would be on, there's about seven homes along the roads that you can actually see the rear yard. So we would add the porches on all of those uh, rear yards. Uh, we have agreed that we will not have any for rent signs posted anywhere on Cloud or on Knollwood. That was an issue that actually just came up yesterday and we're fine with that. 